with good hair. Um, to, to be able to have uh, good hair, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need some facilities. You're going to need a wash rack. You're going to want to have some solid flooring just so that you're not washing them in the mud. Um, even if you can, if you don't have solid flooring like some concrete or something like that, you could use some plywood. Even gravel is better than dirt. Um, you're going to want it to be sloped and be able to drain. Otherwise, you're just going to be washing in a puddle of mud. You're also going to want something non-slip so that those cattle aren't slipping and sliding around. As well as a tie rail, something to tie them to that's going to be sturdy um, and that, you know, they're not going to be able to drag around or get away from you on. Um, another thing to have, if you can, um, is some shoulder posts. And what these shoulder posts do is they actually help keep those cattle from being able to sway back and forth. Um, that way you can get them washed quickly without having to get them to move all the time and also usually keeping yourself a little bit drier. Some other things to have, um, you're going to need to have some supplies. So you're going to need a water hose with a sprayer, um, your foamer if you have one, soap, shampoo, conditioner, conditioning spray, a scrub brush, rice root brush, um, and some combs. Those are all going to be things you're going to want to have around. And also, you might want to go ahead and keep those things in a bucket so that way you're not actually having to run around looking for them. Washing versus rinsing. Um, first things first is blow all of the dirt out first. This is going to save you some time um, in the washing, rinsing um, stages. So um, when you're washing, you're, when I talk about washing, I'm, I'm talking about using soap. And a healthy hide really starts with a clean hide as well. The only thing is, is that washing actually strips the natural oil from the skin. So you don't want to overwash them. So what do I mean by that? I mean washing them every day with soap. Unless it's needed, I would not. I would only wash them maybe once or twice per week, maybe even every other week, depending on uh, whether they need it or not. Um, you just want to make sure that they're clean. After you are done scrubbing, you want to brush that hair straight down and then rinse them and make sure that you have all of the soap out. Um, when you brush that hair straight down and then you rinse them, you're, off, you're giving that hair the ability to be able to, um, or that hide to be able to, uh, you know, rinse out all that soap and all the dirt. You're giving it a place to go to get out of that hide. Um, don't leave any soap on that calf just because um, you know, leaving soap on there is one good way to get dandruff. Once you're done rinsing them and you've made sure you've got all the soap out, you want to get your squeegee and then get the leftover water out using the backside of your comb. So you just flip your comb over and kind of use it like a squeegee and squeegee all of that hair out or <laughs> squeegee all of their, their hair to get all of that water out by, by combing down. Then you're going to want to part their hair, brush it down then brush it forward, and then brush it up to a 45 degree angle. Uh, another thing is don't forget to condition the hair. Uh, ladies, you're going to understand this. If you're going to use a heavy conditioner, you're going to have to rinse it out. Same thing for us. When we get in the shower um, and we put in a conditioner, we're not going to want to leave that in. Otherwise, we're going to have a grease ball hit. So same thing goes for these cattle. Um, if, you're, if you're using a heavy conditioner, go ahead and make sure to rinse it out. Um, another thing is if you're going to use a light conditioner or a leave-in type conditioner like we use on our hair, uh, that can be left in just as long as it's a light conditioner. So rinsing. When I talk about rinsing, I'm, I'm usually referring to this as just water. So why? Why would you just rinse them with just water? You're going to, it also helps keep that hide clean. And it's going to help keep them cool to promote their hair growth. Um, you're going to want to rinse your calves in the morning and in the evening when it gets hot. Even sometimes if you have if you have the ability to, three times a day is not going to hurt them. It's going to help keep them cool. And when you when you take that body temperature down, um, it's going to help promote hair growth. So you're going to want to rinse them until their body actually feels cool to the touch. So if they're still feeling pretty warm, just keep rinsing them. Um, then once you're done, go ahead and squeeze you that water out once again by using the back side of your comb and uh, squeezing it out and going down the side of the calf. Then you're going to want to apply your conditioner 
um, whether that be a, a leave-in or a rinse out or whatever you're going to do there. If you're going to put in a heavy conditioner, just make sure you rinse it out. Um, after you're done with your conditioning, you're going to want to part that hair, go ahead and brush it down, brush it forward, and then brush it to a 45 degree angle to help get it trained. Then you're going to want to blow them completely dry. You're going to want to keep that nozzle um, really close to their hide whenever you're blowing them. And whenever you are blowing, you're going to want to blow from the, the front shoulder to the hind quarter, meaning from the forward, um, from forward to back. And what this does is it keeps the hair laying straight and flat, and you're not going to end up with kind of all these little zigzag lines where you can see where that blower has been. It's going to help keep that hair laying flat and make it look the best. You're going to want to blow that hair forward at a 45 degree angle just to help keep, um, you know, get it trained and heading in the right direction. Move back and forth on both sides of the calf when you're blowing them. So when I talk about this, I'm saying don't blow one side and say, okay, this is dry. I'm going to move on to the other side, blow it dry, and then quit. You basically have to just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, because the side that you originally started on um, if you're thinking that it's dry, when you move to that side that's still wet and you're blowing them, you're just going to be blowing um, moisture that's still going to end up on the other side again, and it's going to um, get that hair kind of moist and wet, and then you've got another situation with dandruff. So just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That's going to help to really get that calf dry. Make sure you're, you're drying them everywhere. So their belly, um, their brisket area, down there through their flank. Um, just making sure that they're completely dry. So a rule of thumb is that if you think that they're dry, just go ahead and keep drying them, um, blowing them dry for at least another 30 minutes. Um, that for sure will mean that they are actually dry. Another way to tell if your calf is actually dry is when you have that um, nozzle close to their hide. If you put your face up there and you don't feel any moisture coming back onto your face and you feel warm, dry air blowing back, then that means you don't have um, any moisture left and that they're actually dry. Um, but just because they're dry in one spot doesn't mean that their their entire body is dry. So just make sure that they're dry. Um, a little extra time every day is going to save you um, trying to clean out all that dandruff later on down the road. working that hair. So after they're dry, you're going to want to apply conditioner and go ahead and just brush that in. We're going to want to work that conditioner into the hide and down to the skin. Um, also, we're going to want to use your roto brush on that leg hair. Go ahead and um, blow the conditioner in. And when we're blowing conditioner in, um, you want to keep the nozzle about two to three feet away from the calf while blowing the conditioner in because otherwise you're going to blow it out. So when we're drying a calf, we're trying to blow the water and moisture out. Um, when we're trying to apply a product, you want to blow that in. So you're going to want to get up off of that calf and be able to blow that into them. If you can see the picture here, um, the you can see on one side where they've used their roto brush to fluff those legs and the other side where they didn't. Um, so actually roto brushing that, that leg hair every day is, is a very, very vital part to keeping that hair um, healthy and, and working. Shedding. So cattle have a hair cycle of about 90 to 120 days. And when they shed, they're going to shed their old hair to make room for the new stuff. So you want to make sure to time um, the shedding cycles to where they're going to have their most healthy, the healthiest hair um, you know, during your, your show. So you want to shed that old hair to make room for the new stuff. And you're going to want to use a shedding tool to remove that hair. Uh, a telltale sign if you have a black calf is that little bit of red tinge to that hair means that that hair is ready to be shed off. You're going to want to use your shedding tool before you wash or rinse. And then you can actually blow them, um, just to get all the rest of that hair out. Um, only use that shedding comb on the body. Do not use it on the legs or the tail head. You're going to shed off um, hair that you actually want to keep.
All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some common spring skin and hair issues. Um, biggest one's going to be dandruff. Um, you know, cold, dry air is going to cause some dandruff out there. Um, however, some common causes are some of those pour on uh, wormers, soap, fitting products. The alcohol based dewormers actually dry that skin out and can cause dandruff. So you're going to want to watch out for that. Another one is lice. Lice love the cold weather, and we have especially been cold here lately. Um, and lice are spread by direct contact. So if you happen to have uh, a few calves in the barn and one of them has lice, they're all going to probably end up with lice. Also, if you're going to these shows, um, jackpot shows, then, um, you know, your, your calf could possibly rub up against somebody else's and they have, um, they have lice on them and you're going to end up with a calf that has lice as well. Um, another thing is, uh, you know, if you were jackpotting with friends and they have a calf that has life and you're sharing equipment, that's another another way that lice gets kind of moved around from calf to calf. And another thing to keep in mind is whenever you see them rubbing, they'll actually rub, almost rub themselves bald um, just because they're itching so much from those lice. And uh, usually that rubbing exists from the shoulder forward and you'll see those bald spots, but not always. Um, another one is ringworm, which is not actually a worm. It's actually a fungal disease that's also spread by direct contact. And what ends up happening with that is the, the skin ends up getting raised and the hair turns rough. And then after several weeks, that hair is actually going to fall out and it's going to leave a thick, patchy, scaly, gray area, um, usually on their face, around their neck, um, around their eyes, um, all the kind of typical places you're going to see uh, ringworm. Another one is warts. Warts are actually called caused by a virus and you're typically only going to see warts in kind of those younger calves because they haven't built up a um, an immune response to that yet. Uh, warts are usually white or tan. They have a rough flaky surface and they actually appear about two months after they've been exposed. So um, they could be exposed to warts and you may not ever see them for a couple of months. They usually go away on their own. However, if you're wanting them to uh, go away quicker, you can kind of pinch or crush those warts off with uh, some hoof nippers and um, that will actually stimulate an, an immune response from the calf and it'll kind of kick that, those, that wart virus on out of there. Once again, this information is provided courtesy of the Grant County Cooperative Extension Service. Again, my name is Jessica and I'm the 4-H and Ag agent here. Um, if you're wanting to give me some feedback on if these videos are helpful to you, um, you know, any kind of suggestions for things to cover, a question you want to ask, or an idea for another video or a 